The following documents and recordings are the second instalment in a compilation detailing the events of the archaeological team sent to Base Camp Piedra, consisting of Dr. Carito Ureta, Lucas Criado, Ava Olivia Moreno, Dr. Josefa Guerrero, Simon Hall, and Dr. Xiao Liu. Following their preparations, the archaeological team began to assemble in El Calafate, a town in central Argentina along Lake Argentino. In the winter months, snowstorms and rainfall in the Patagonian ice fields can drastically affect the landscape. Worsened by heavy winds, such storms can reduce visibility and lead to glacial calving, ice collapses and avalanches. During these conditions, travel is not advised. The White Vault sections come from the camp's digital backup. It was recorded on the smartphone of Simon Hall upon landing at the local El Calafate airport. Paul, keep up. We have a busy day. Yes, of course. I'm right behind you. So, Ray, I made it to Argentina. Still at the airport, just landed, but it's already exciting. I can see some mountains in the distance. I have bars here, so you should receive this video, but once we get up the mountain, we're going to be incommunicado until we get back down. I'll take plenty of pictures, and I'll try to call you tonight. I'm on mountain time. All right, talk tonight. Oh, shit. Um, Professor Guerrero? I was just... Mm, what was she wearing? Um, lo siento? Um... Vio usted a mujer con uh, blusa gris, con caballo gris, con maleta roja? ¿La mujer del avión? <laughs> sí, está en la carrusel para recoger el equipaje. Oh, gracias. <laughs> Hall, there you are. Grab the bags. The van should already be outside. Yes, will do. <laughs> I see the van. I'm going to check in with them. Come over when you get the last bag. Uh, yes, Professor. Creo que el obstáculo más grande será la presión con el tiempo. Oh, ahí está mi asistente. Le presento a Simon Hall. Oh, esta es la doctora Carito Uret, de la Universidad Nacional de La Plata, aquí en Argentina. Oh, mucho gusto, Dr. Urita. Uh, yo, yo no saber mucho sobre Universidad um, Nacional de, de La Plata. ¿Está aquí en el Calafate, Patagonia? No, La Plata es cerca de Buenos Aires. You're from the U.S.? Yes. Paul is a student of mine from the University of Pittsburgh, not the Universidad de Chile. My doctoral candidate is also from the U.S. What university? She's currently in La Plata with me, but she grew up there in the U.S. ¿Dónde está ella? Se suponía que estaría en el mismo vuelo que vos. <sighs> Doctor Ureta, ya llegué. Qué pena. Disculpa la tardanza. Creo que perdieron mi equipaje durante el viaje. Oh, it's you. Arrest tu candidata al doctorado? Sí, usted debe ser Simón. Y usted debe ser la doctora Guerrero. I'm Eva Olivia Moreno. It's nice to meet you. That's my bag. What? Simon, that's my bag. Oh, oh, sorry. I thought it was Professor Guerrero's. <laughs> well, I brought it to the van for you. It would have been a very nice gesture had I known who you were. <coughs> Hola, disculpe. ¿Y usted quién es? Lucas, nice to meet you. I'm your guide up to the site, so is this everyone? Dr. Liu is at the hotel. Everyone else is here. Yes, Lucas, we can go. Dr. Ureta says you're American. Well, I'm, I'm actually Colombian, but I grew up outside of Chicago, so I guess that counts. Why is your phone recording? I don't want to miss anything. 
and my Spanish comprehension is a bit slow. So I just record it, and if I miss anything important, I can go back and listen again. Aw, well, you did well enough when we spoke. A few issues, but understandable. That's nice of you, but it's more for when Professor Guerrero starts talking really fast. Fair warning. Dr. Oreta does that too. Have you met Dr. Liu? Dr. Oreta is a bit apprehensive about her inclusion in this trip, and I wonder if finally meeting will smooth things out between them. The professor and I had a call with her a couple weeks ago. Just to say hello and go over some information before meeting here. She seems very nice, professional, even if some of her beliefs are a bit outlandish. You mean the documents from China? Yeah, I saw them. They were a bit strange. Oh, Dr. Ureta said you were a doctoral candidate at La Plata. What's your focus? Climate change, cold climate territory, and human exploration during the late Pleistocene across South America. You? Oh, well, not a doctoral candidate yet, but I focus on GIS and digital preservation. Or that's the plan. How far is the drive? Mm, I'm not sure. ¿Qué tan lejos estamos? Una vez recojamos a la doctora Liu, es un viaje de un poco menos de cuatro horas al Chalten. I thought we were staying at El Calafate tonight. Well, not anymore. I got calls from the pilot, and if we want the helicopter to drop us off, we have to leave tonight. We have to drive up to El Chalten today, so we can prepare. Is that okay, Simon? You look worried. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I just... Uh, I have to write a very apologetic email. The following was recorded on the smartphone of Mr. Simon Hall later that same day. The video shows all of the team standing in a small building, presumably an old tourist centre based on the posters and pamphlets on display. Okay, so um, everyone speaks enough English? Yeah, I do. Yes. 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 You too? Yes, rather well, in fact. <laughs> well, better than me, then. Uh, okay, I have the signed form for this trip from most of you. I need one more signature each for the helicopter flight as well. So, sign a form and pass it on, please. Tá legal, os equipamentos estão prontos. Peguei assinaturas e os contatos de minha agência de todo mundo. É, acho que é isso. Again, I am Lucas. I am a guide with Sinabeni Retreats. I was with the hikers who first found the drawings. Then with Dr. Ureta on the next trip. Now, this is going to be tough living for a few days, okay? The tents are secure and offer some level of comfort, but it's still an ice field. And the winds will be hard too. So, please just follow my directions and we can get those drawings looked at in no time. Carvings. Uh, what did you say? Carvings. They aren't drawn onto the rock, they're carved into it. Uh, well, alright, carvings then, sorry. So, get work done and we can get off the mountain. I am going to give the forms over to our pilot, and by the way, Dr. Liu, I need you to sign off on the release of liability documents. Can you come with me, please? Yes. Uh, I think Dr. Ureta has a few words for the rest of you before we leave, so we'll be back soon. Muchas gracias por organizar todos los cambios en los horarios. Cuando lleguemos a Base Camp Piedra, tendremos una semana para documentar lo que vemos en detalle. Los cambios de las condiciones climáticas nos atrasaron una Thank you all for accommodating the changes to our schedule. Once we reach Base Camp Piedra, we will have a week to document the site in detail. The timeline on the weather conditions has delayed us several weeks, but now we have a safe window to get to the camp. Once we get there, documentation work starts in the morning. Tonight will be about unpacking, getting the equipment up and running, and getting a feel for the area. It's a mountain and it's steep. Lucas has already laid down several guidelines for the ascension to the carvings. ¿Nos puedes dar más información sobre el ascenso? How far is the tent and camp from the carving site? Sí, Lucas nos dirá más sobre la seguridad al momento de ascender. But we were able to place the camp at approximately 290 meters below the site of the carvings. Mm, se me parece peligroso tener que recorrer todo ese camino todos los días. Why is the camp so far? El terreno es desigual y muy pocos espacios permiten que las carpas queden aseguradas. Lucas pudo conseguir un lugar plano en un pequeño espacio entre la montaña y los campos de hielo. Sadly, it's still not very easy to reach. Esto es todo muy emocionante. I'm happy to be back down in Patagonia. It's been far too long. Bueno, well, when I heard you took a job in Pittsburgh, I certainly thought you'd gone crazy. 
<laughs> Now, with Lucas not very confident in his Spanish and Zhao not speaking relatively any, please refrain from excluding them when possible. Zhao, though approaching the site with some bias, is a talented epigrapher, giving us her valuable time and expertise. Even if you disagree with her theories, I expect nothing but professionalism from everyone involved in this expedition. De otra manera, por favor recuerda que los datos y descripciones deben ser ingresados en español siempre que sea posible y que el reporte final también debería ser presentado igual. Hey, did you get all that? I will the second time around. Okay, everyone, are you ready? The helicopter is ready for us. The pilot said we should act quickly. Did I miss anything, Corrido? Nothing we haven't discussed previously, Zhao. Listen up, this is serious. Secure everything you wear into your person. Follow me directly to the helicopter, then when board, strap in. I'll check to make sure you're secure before we take off. Let's get going. The following is a journal entry kept by Dr. Xiao Liu during her time in South America. Written as a personal document but saved to the camp's digital backup, the document was written in Mandarin. I went back home and spent so much time to translate these documents. I'm happy to be able to go to Patagonia. The environment is very severe. I'm not like when I was a kid so young. But I'm ready to prepare for the next generation. After all that time translating documents back home, I am relieved to finally be here in Patagonia. The conditions are harsh. And I'm certainly not the younger woman I was during my graduate studies, but I am prepared for the challenge. We were flown up to the camp on the mountain earlier today. Due to an approaching weather front, we had to fly up today instead of tomorrow morning. Earlier, we watched the most beautiful sunset I've ever seen. The ice fields below us reflect the wonderful colors of the sky, and the mountain range stretches as far as we can see. It's a bit cold, and the winds that roll in tomorrow will drop the temperature further, but the camp is sufficiently comfortable. Lucas, our guide, was responsible for setting up the camp in the earlier weeks. He has given us the short tour. We have a very small generator and gasoline for emergencies, but day-to-day -day power comes from several solar cells atop the larger tent. The selection of foods doesn't look too varied or appetizing, but there is certainly enough. We have a functioning satellite phone, but none of us have signal for our individual cell phones. Simon, a graduate student from America, is working on setting up the camp's digital backup. It will be very convenient. So far, we've uploaded many of the resources and papers we feel are important to the understanding of the glyphs. And as we collect photos, documents, data, and ideas, they will all be stored. I will keep detailed entries when I am able. When I think of the journals I translated and of the drawings of the glyphs, I believe that had there only been more to work from, we would be better informed. I can only hope that my analysis is correct. I have staked much on the connection between these glyphs and those documented in Heilongjiang. The similarity cannot be denied, even though Dr. Ureda tries to do so during every conversation. As for the glyphs, we will climb up to see them in the morning. Something's wrong. The following comes from a section of a larger recording. It is from the laptop of Dr. Guerrero. Twelve minutes before the start of this section, Dr. Guerrero had begun the recording to sync to the base camp's backup. Here is the relevant section. Uh, okay. Um, try it again, Professor. Is it working now? <sighs> no. <sighs> Can I take a look at your laptop again? Of course. Él podrá tener todo arreglado para esta noche. Así lo creo. Los otros aparatos no causaron tantos problemas. Mm, le aseguro que um, ah, trataré mucho. Simon, what's that? That? A, a camera. Yeah, I know that. I mean the larger case next to it. Oh, that is a portable laser reality capture device. Wait, really? You mean a laser 3D imager? Exactly. You can take a look. 
Finally! Okay. <laughs> Professor, it seems to be working. Dr. Ureta, can I see your laptop? Si. Josefa va a preparar café. Would you like some? Si. Can you show me how? Whoa, 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 whoa. Careful. That's expensive equipment. Oh my gosh, I know. How did we get this? The tourism board already had it. So when I submitted the request, they had it transferred for Lucas to bring up with us. It's more expensive than this tent, and I'm responsible for its safe return. So would you please pack it up until we need it? Please. Thank you. Will you show me how to use it? If I have time. Yeah, I guess we're going to be busy, huh? <coughs> I think I'm going to go get some of that coffee. Mm. Playing hard to get with her? Nice. What? Well, either that or you're an idiot. <laughs> um, excuse me? Idiot, then. Listen, Simon. Ava didn't want to learn more about the imager. She... <clears throat> she wanted to spend time with you. Okay? <laughs> I really think you read that situation wrong. She's a doctoral candidate, and this equipment is hard to get access to. This is a great opportunity for her. Me too. <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> Please, Lucas, if you could just drop it. I need to get back to work. And you're making me uncomfortable. <laughs> uncomfortable? I'm just trying to help you out. <sighs> Not that. I just don't like guns. Why do you even need one up here? The biggest animals I've heard of in Patagonia are these small llama things. Oh, well, for protection. That site may be worth a lot of money to the local governments. And I know they are paying me well to keep it safe. Um, so, to clarify, you're here to protect the site first and us second. Exactly. Well, thanks for that. Could you go now? Todo bien. Me asusté y se me derramó el café. I poured some boiling water on my arm. It's fine, really. Profesora, siéntese, por favor. I'll, I'll get the first aid kit. Lucas, it is not appropriate for you to startle me when I'm working with something dangerous. What? Startle? I'll make the coffee. No, yo me encargo. Go finish what you are doing. We need everything working by the morning. I'll finish up. Now, what did you mean? It's fine. It's all just an accident. Disculpame, doctor. Oh, Dr. Liu. I didn't see you come in. I heard a yell. Is everyone okay? Yes. Well, Dr. Ureta burned herself making coffee. Should I get Lucas? He must know how to treat a burn. He's already in there. He and Ava have it covered. No, I just saw him. He's in the sleeping area. Sorry, but he's in there. Simon. Uh, yes? Never mind. Excuse me. Oh, and if you would like me to sync up your laptop, just bring it on over. Because this one is done. The following comes from the laptop of Dr. Liu. There were approximately two minutes of Mr. Hall working in silence before this section began. This is the relevant section. Ok, superada el pequeño inconveniente, volvamos a lo que nos trajo acá. Eva, bring me that coffee when you come out. Claro que sí, doctora. Estaré ahí en un momento. Josefa, tratemos de revisar todo rápidamente. I want to get up early to start the climb to the site. Mm. Mm. Sí, me parece bien. This morning I was in Pittsburgh, so let's do this quick. ¿Su café? Gracias. Everyone come in here, please. Simon, can you wait for a moment? Thank you. Josefa and I would like to cover some things in a brief meeting. And then tomorrow morning, very early, we will start up to the glyphs for the day. Josefa, would you like to start? Looking over our position and the information brought back by Carito and Lucas earlier, the glyphs are currently unassigned and undated. We have a long history of geoglyphs, stone carving and stone painted here in Chile, in Argentina. We also have numerous Aboriginal cultures that have historically been documented in the nearby areas. But based on the current brief examination of the site, the carvings do not align themselves with the currently known styles for these groups. The two geographically closest modern groups are those of Aonikeng people from the Tewalcha complex and the seafaring Alakalufe. But 
The Al Calufe were a seafaring culture until they moved inland into settlements during the 1900s. I can't think of any proof they ever settled this high into the mountains. Yes, but again, they are modern peoples. Also, cliffs do not denote a settlement. So historically, and given the carbon's placement under the ice growth, we are possibly looking at pre to well to complex peoples. So, are we pulling multiple ice samples for testing? It won't help to determine the exact age of the carvings, but it may give us a cutoff point. What about volcanic markers? Yes, we will be taking several samples after we determine the extent of the carvings. Uh, I do a lot of trips in the area for tourists, and about 300 kilometers northeast of here is that cave, Cueva de las Manos. The tour says it was pre Tehuelche. Oh, I brought that reference. Um, okay. Earliest confirmed date from radiocarbon comes to circa 9500 BP, before present. If a timeline that always to be considered, the glyphs will be far in advance of any other finds from that time. There are sites of occupation further south dated older. Fell's Cave has evidence of prehistoric occupation dating back to 10,000 BP. And Puesto El Condor at Paliake has documented cave painting and human remains. A study from 1999 put those at around 7,800 BP. What I said still stands. I've seen pictures of those cave paintings and they don't compare to the level of detail in those cliffs. Excuse me. <sighs> now, tomorrow morning, we head up early to start documentation and sample collection. Everyone is taking gear up, so be careful. And Dr. Liu, while I know you're a gifted linguist and epigrapher, I think it's best we don't jump to any conclusions until we have time to examine the site more thoroughly. ¿Dónde estamos? Creo que nos hemos desviado. Vamos a esperar hasta después de la examinación inicial mañana. We'll have a better understanding by then. Sí, estoy bien. De todas formas, ya estoy cansada. All right, everyone. Let's just try to get some sleep and be ready early. What should we expect for the ascension tomorrow, Lucas? Oh, oh. Um, there will be heavy winds out of the west, which will sustain off and on for several hours. The lead lines are already set up, but I'll head up before everyone to double check. Don't worry. Otherwise, it will be a strain, but doable. All right, you heard him. Get some rest, and tomorrow we find out a bit more. This next recording comes from a recording device brought to Base Camp Piedra by Dr. Xiao Liu. The video is very shaky and mostly shows the varying white, greys and blacks of the rocky mountainside, as well as the billowing clouds above. The timestamps come from the next morning. I'm trying to get this all on camera! I'm not disagreeing, Dr. Liu. I think documenting the ascent is important and maybe even beneficial for our presentation to the tourism board. I'm just concerned. Hey, what's going on up there? Why have we stopped? Uh, could you please record during our second ascent, doctor? Right now, I'm personally very concerned with my safety and would like to reach the glyphs. The recording cuts there, but resumes again 15 minutes later. The video now focuses on a rock face covered in patches of ice. Where sections of the rock face are visible, the glyphs can be seen carved into the rock. While several glyphs appear fully visible, others continue under the surrounding ice. The extent of the carvings cannot be visually determined. overview from here, though there isn't a lot of space. Yeah, what? I can't breathe again. Yeah. Oh, you know what I mean, small. We should start from the uppermost reveal point. Coming, Professor. of course, for the previously documented glyphs found in China, but I cannot deny the many similarities. Look, I ah. Careful, always watch your footing. The path is mostly <clears throat> rock and ice fall. Yes, sorry. I have not done much mountain climbing. But look, here, these graphemy markers are almost 
almost identical, but more importantly is this cluster here. It's a repeat of the exact same group of graphemes I have drawn for the site in China. And this one, while partially obstructed, I believe if we are able to safely uncover it, it may look like this glyph. And what of the difference? What? You said there were several differences. Can you give me an example? Well, here, the carvings are all sunk relief, etched into the mountain rock. But the other side, it was a kind of bar relief. There are style differences, this being far more geometric. And the graphemes do display slight variations. This line, for example, is depicted in the journals as curving near the right end. But here, in the rock base, it has no deviance. Or this circular shape sits under a horizontal line here. Yet in the notes, the line is not horizontal, but at a slight ascending angle. Come up the path with me. I would like to see more. Uh, is this the last of you, Ava? It should be. Good. Can you all bring them up, Simon? Okay. Please move out of the way. Let's go further up. I haven't seen the rest yet. The recording ends but resumes again seven minutes later. The video now focuses on another rock face where larger sections of the glyphs are visible. All six members of the team are accounted for, with five visible during the camera shifting motions and Dr. Liu operating the recorder. Yes, this one is set up. I can help with the, uh, <coughs> uh, quiero decir, uh, que esta camara esta lista. La, la puedo ayudar con las pruebas cuando necesita, uh, profesora. La doctora Ureta y yo te buscaremos cuando sepamos dónde estaremos taladrando las muestras. Go ahead and set up the other equipment first. <laughs> sí, yo puedo hacer eso. Gracias. ¿Cuándo podés empezar con la digitilación? Cuando coloque el scan, yo me encargo. Anything I can do to help with that? Excuse me, should I begin to work on documenting what we can already see? Or should I wait until we expose the extent of the cliffs? Go ahead and begin constructing a site map. It will take a lot of time to find the full reach of the glyphs. It may not be possible during this short session. It may be too extensive. It is a lot more than I thought. I will begin in the upper quadrant. Bugas, can you assist me? Yes. I don't know how to use any of this equipment, though. The only equipment you need to work is a ruler. Is the wind over? No, it will be back. Now, Lucas, take the end of this measuring tape and walk to the end of that glyph near Simon. And if Eva is free to assist us, please send her up. Okay, easy enough. Lucas said you could use my help, Dr. Liu? If you're free, yes. Yes, Dr. Ureta and Dr. Guerrero have not chosen sites for sample drilling yet, so I'm free. Tell me how to help. Have you made detailed site maps before? Yes, if you would like to take the measurements, I can put together the preliminary. I understand it's much easier as... What? Oh, shit! That was strange. Holy shit! Why would it do oh, that? What happened? Is everyone okay? It just... It flew right into that rock. Maybe it was stuck in the wind? No, don't touch it. Uh, I'll bring it somewhere else. Are you okay up there? We're fine. Just surprised. A bird hit the wall. Ugh, there's blood on the glyphs. Should I wash it off? Give me a moment. Let's get to work on the site map. 
The following is a portion of a digital file journaling the excavation written by Dr. Ureta. Much of the larger document details the tedium of the day's archaeological examination, including but not limited to several pages of measurements, possible references, and the beginnings of a glyph catalogue. She included many of her speculations as part of her process of examination and illumination. Debido a las condiciones y a un clima complicado, el poco tiempo de luz solar que tenemos limita las horas de trabajo útil que tendremos en la montaña. Necesitaremos traer equipo adicional para asegurarnos que tengamos luz artificial en el lugar. Fácilmente podemos Due to the time of year and the difficult weather, the short hours of sunlight limit our effective time on the mountainside. We will need to bring up additional equipment to secure our artificial lights in place. We can easily get four more hours out of the day once they're operational. The glyphs are presenting an interesting find, which may contrast the currently accepted chronology of human occupation of South America. Dr. Guerrero and I have our disagreements on the dates for human occupation. She is very conservative, opting toward the more recent, but we are consistently finding sites all across South America that push the dates further. Every few years a new find or set of remains helps us to better construct the timeline of southward migration, and these glyphs are an incredible find if we can pull sufficient material to test. We were able to locate several possible areas today from which we plan to drill for ice and sediment samples, as many of the glyphs are still covered either partially or in their entirety. Simon Hall, Dr. Guerrero's graduate student and assistant, has begun the process of scanning the visible glyphs to create a map corresponding to our hand-drawn site map, as well as uploading their location to a GIS grid. Side note, after this, I would recommend that the supplied theodolite be replaced, as it is an extremely aged piece of equipment that led to several errors and the need to triple check every number. I found something during my time examining the GIS locations. In my experience going up and down the mountain a few times now, I have noticed that the glyphs do not appear on easily accessible rock faces in other nearby valleys. The glyphs appear to sit on a south-facing rock wall, with some natural variation, eventually banking south. Based on the logged coordinates so far, I would like to make some educated guesses as to where we should search for the extent of the carvings. To some amount, they appear as a path. This concludes the final relevant record from the day the team first examined the glyphs on the mountainside. This completes the second set of documents related to the archaeological team sent to examine and record the petroglyphs found in the Patagonian ice field above Base Camp Piedra. The White Vault 